Hi, my name is Eric Schaefer. I'm a technical partner manager with K2. Today we're going to be looking at K2 Workflow Services. The K2 Workflow Client Services take the K2 Workflow Client API and expose them through some new interfaces. Uh, a web service, WCF, and REST endpoints have been made available. They all support SSL, and the REST service will provide you with XML, JSON, and Atom formats. Basically what this means is that you can get platform-free access to your work list and process instances and it is a full mirror of the objects in the current .NET API. First we're going to take a look at the WCF service and how can you can use that as an initiation page as well as a task page. We're also going to look at how to use the REST service to create a fully client-side JavaScript-based work list uh, uh, page. Jumping into the environment now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you where these K2 services live. Uh, under the site where the workspace was installed, there will be the K2 services section where you can get access to the web service, uh, ws.asmx. This gives you the ability to do things like open the work list, open work list item, start new process instance, update process instance, execute action, uh, and so on. Um, this is just a standard web service format and you can add the web service reference in your project uh, just as you would any other web service uh, uh, solution. Uh, in a WCF manner, we can get the WCF service. The service is also exposed. It has the same functionality as the web service. And here you can see the, uh, the WSDL uh, for that. Uh, if you go into your Visual Studio project or your, uh, your .NET project, um, and add the WCF uh, service endpoint as a reference, you'll be able to, uh, to build uh, an application against that. And I'll show you an example in just a moment. The final service is the REST service. If we go to uh, the REST service. Uh, this service is uh, um, uh, a REST service. It provides you the, the capability to do uh, things uh, without having to use the, uh, the SOAP protocol. Um, we can do a number of different things, and there's documentation in the in the help files on how to use these, uh, how to use the REST service, and what the URIs are. Um, the one that we'll be using is work list items. This allows us to go ahead and bring back a list of all our work list items with details um, about the the specific work list items, serial number, who the allocated user is, what the link is to that uh, uh, to that task, what the available actions are. Um, and where those current processes uh, are in, uh, in the, uh, our work list items are. We can take these, uh, these work list items and we can open up them, them up specifically. So if we just wanted to see um, 289 underscore 57, which is one of our current tasks, um, we can open that up and see where that one is specifically. Um, so the, the list of uh, what you can do with the URI is in the uh, help documentation, um, but we'll look at it how we can use this REST service to actually go and build a, a work list, uh, a work list web part or a work list um, uh, uh, page to using completely uh, client side uh, and JavaScript uh, capabilities. If I jump into uh, to Visual Studio, go to our work list HTML page. This is an HTML page uh, that uh, that has all the uh, let me uh, collapse the script for a second. You can see we have the test uh, work list title. We're including jQuery, so I'm using some jQuery capabilities uh, within this uh, within the, the scripting. Um, you see, the only thing in the body is just a little div, uh, and then uh, in the script is where kind of everything uh, everything happens. Um, I register uh, an event uh, on the document to say when the document is ready. Go ahead and call the get work list function, which is defined uh, right here. It's basically an AJAX call um, that calls the URL k2 services slash rest svc slash worklist items items and then I'm selecting to bring back the format uh, as as a JSON object uh, so if we go back to our um, our, our link here um, we can say we want to see the items in a specific format by adding a query string parameter so I could say I want to see this uh, as XML which is how we were seeing it before if we wanted to actually see it as an Atom feed or an RSS style feed, you can see we can get the same uh, list of tasks uh, through that mechanism. And then finally, the, the JSON uh, manner uh, allows us to bring back the object as a JSON 
file, which I'll just save to my desktop here. Go ahead and open that. You'll see it comes back in a JSON format, which is hard to read in Notepad. So I will just copy that out. Go to a little online JSON viewer that I've been using, and I can see that formatted here. So you can see your process instance and all your work list items. JSON is good for working within JavaScript, like we were looking at. If we go back to our uh, <clears throat> go back to our uh, uh, HTML file here. So here we can see we're saying we want to call the get uh, method. We want to get the JSON as the data type back. Um, we have an error function that will alert us if there's any errors. And the success function basically does something very simple as creating a table. Um, so I have some uh, starting and ending tags for my table. Uh, and then uh, an, uh, a header line for my rows. And then for each item that comes back in that data object, I'm creating a new row. And the row will show us the process instance folio as a URL with a link to the task. The next row is the, or the next column is the process instance. The next column is the activity destination name. Um, uh, there's a link to the, the, the view flow um, uh, component to be able to do some reporting on that, uh, appending, the, uh, appending the ID at the end. You can see there. And then also for every, uh, the final column says for every action uh, or for uh, for each task, uh, I'm going to add a select, uh, basically a drop-down list um, with a link to each one of the actions that I can take. So I'll have a drop-down list for all the actions, and when the action uh, or when the drop-down action is selected, I'm calling an action task uh, JavaScript method that we'll look at in just a moment to actually take the action on that task. So that'll loop through all the actions for each task item. Uh, and then finishes up by uh, by basically finishing up the table, finishing up the rows, um, and then appending that uh, um, that HTML into the into the document. I also have a little JavaScript here for doing some uh, uh, some hovering over um, highlighting of the of the rows. Scroll down a little bit, we can see the action task function. This function basically just says if you've selected anything other than select action, it'll ask you if you want to take that action. If you confirm. It'll do another AJAX call to the K2 services, the REST service, for work list items. It'll pass in the uh, serial number of the work list item and then add the actions um, uh, tag plus the value of the action that's going to be executed and then the execute. And when that get method is called, it's going to go ahead and action that item. If it's successful, it'll mention that it's completed and then it will go ahead and refresh the work list. Uh, and that's pretty much the... Uh, the extent of this uh, this HTML file. If we actually go and look at this in the browser, we can see that it's going to go ahead and return all my work list items. Uh, I can go ahead and open up um, this one at the bottom. I can open up the uh, the view flow for this task and see that that link uh, works well. I can go ahead and also open up the the task page specifically, which we'll look at in just a moment. This is the the, the task page for this item, which we could then either approve or decline and click submit. Alternatively, we have the batch actioning or the action capability here to be able to go and just immediately take the approve action on this vacation request. When I select approve, ask me if I want to take that action. I click OK. It's going to go ahead, send that um, request through. When it comes back successful, it'll tell us the action is completed. Click OK, and it'll refresh the work list. And that's just an example of using uh, HTML and JavaScript and the REST services uh, for K2 to build a fairly functional K2 work list web part um, without any code behind. If we jump back into Visual Studio and look at um, using the WCF service uh, as an example for code behind pages when you are initiating processes um, and taking uh, and creating task pages. Um, you can certainly do that functionality through the REST service as well. Uh, but if you want to have code behind or uh, do it in an ASP.NET format, um, you just add your reference to the web service through the, the references section, uh, and then you can go ahead and create your client reference using the process navigation client service. You create that connection. You create a process instance object. You add what the name of that process is that you're going to kick off. If there are any data fields that you need to populate, you create those data fields and a data field array for them. Populate the values from the values that are on the form, so the text box, the date time uh, boxes, 
um, uh, the description, and then you basically pass those fields into your process instance data field object, populate the folio, and then call the start new process instance uh, method, passing in parameters uh, for uh, what data and uh, and uh, what synchronous options you want to do for this uh, for this process instance. Close the connection, and then I'm redirecting to the work list HTML. Uh, the start page, if we look at the uh, the actual page, very simple, just uh, you know four text boxes and a submit button. Uh, also have a manager approval page, um, which captures basically surfaces the details from the task, shows you the action, um, and allows you to take an action. If we look at the code for that using the WCF service, basically the same as the start process, just in kind of the reverse. Uh, when the page loads, we create the navigation client. Um, we open up the connection, and we open up our work list item using the work list item uh, uh, object and the open work list item method. We pass in our query string parameter, which will be our serial number, and the various other parameters that come through. We have our actions collection, which we will populate as the data source for our dropdown list. For each one of the data fields that we want to surface on the form, we'll just go through and add those fields back into the uh, into the controls. Close the connection there, and then when they click the button to take a specific action, we again open up the connection, and we call the execute action by serial method, passing in the query string serial number, the drop-down uh, list selected value, uh, and our synchronous option, and then close that connection. So to see this kind of uh, running through, let's go ahead and use the start process page, so we'll just view this in the browser. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my name, pass in a start date, an end date, and a description. Let's say we're going to go on a holiday. Click submit. It's going to go ahead and submit to kick off the process. It redirects me to my work list page, which if I click the refresh button, will go ahead and bring back that new task. If I click the link for that task, that will open up the task page that we were looking at, populates the values from the process, allows me to take and make a decision, say I want to decline this one, click submit, that'll complete that action, and we can refresh our work list, and that item is gone. So with that, I have uh, very little code, um, and uh, you can see the, the power of being able to use not only the, the WCF services for code behind pages, but also the REST services uh, for solutions where you would like to uh, do uh, take these actions and, and, and work on this within things like JavaScript uh, within the HTML of your page. <clears throat> In summary, the K2 Workflow Client Services provide platform-free access to work lists and process instances using WCF, Web Service, and REST endpoints. Thank you.